NASA making a historic announcement today that the Voyager probe has entered interstellar space, that place between the stars. It's now out. NASA's Voyager 1 spacecraft, a pioneer in exploring the farthest limits of our solar system, has met a catastrophic computer malfunction. Instead of seamlessly sending data, it now transmits a strange stream of ones and zeros back to Earth. This unexpected setback has raised concerns about the health of one of the world's oldest space explorers. It also raises concerns about the challenges of long-term space missions and the longevity of technology in the harsh confines of space. How will this issue be resolved? What steps are being taken to ensure the continuous operation and safety of Voyager 1? Join us as we delve into NASA's warning about Voyager 1 and how it may have made contact with an unknown force in deep space. In the 1970s, the Voyager probes embarked on an unprecedented mission into space. For more than 45 years, these simply manufactured and equipped probes have delivered unique data, and they were the first man-made objects to reach interstellar distance. Voyager 1, in particular, has shocked Nasay since its launch into orbit. In 2012, Voyager 1 entered interstellar space. This is the sphere of space beyond the effective ranges of our sun and the closest stars. Even now, interstellar space remains mysterious. We know very little about what happens in this seemingly vacant region. Voyager 1 is a basic technological device built in the 1970s. Voyager 1 and its sister probe, Voyager 2, have been equipped with essential measuring equipment, cameras, and radio wave receivers. The cameras were turned off years ago to conserve energy. On the other hand, the radio wave receivers are still operational, and something strange happened here just lately. At a distance of 23 billion kilometers from Earth, a faint steady hum occurred. According to experts, the hum was so faint that the volume needed to be properly enhanced before it could be heard. Following the shocking news that people had heard the first noises from intergalactic space, scientists promptly offered an explanation. The feeble waves are most likely caused by gases in the interstellar medium, primarily hydrogen and plasma. Even that far out in space, disruptions are expected due to the effect of solar winds. This has pushed engineers and scientists to discover and resolve the issue from 23 billion kilometers away, allowing the historic mission to keep offering invaluable information from its voyage through space. Voyager 1 and its twin spacecraft, Voyager 2, are NASA's longest-running missions. They are the only probes to have ever explored interstellar space, that is, the immense expanse between stars. The two spacecraft were initially sent to explore Jupiter and Saturn and were only supposed to survive five years. However, after making many discoveries, including detecting active volcanoes on Jupiter's moon, Io, NASA extended the spacecraft's mission. Both spacecraft carry a golden record, a 12-inch gold-plated copper disc with sounds and images to represent humanity if extraterrestrials find them. NASA has not revealed the exact pattern that Voyager 1 is sending. The problem is with Voyager 1's Attitude Articulation and Control System, AACS, which maintains the spacecraft and antenna. The AACS seems to be operating well. The spacecraft is receiving orders, acting on them, and relaying data to Earth with the same signal strength as before. Nonetheless, the AACS sometimes sends garbage telemetry data to the spacecraft's managers. The NASA statement did not disclose when the problem occurred or how long it has persisted. The agency said Voyager workers will continue to research the problem and try to solve or adapt to it. But what precisely is causing the spacecraft to send such a mess of data? Is it a result of a minor technical error or a major problem occurring in the background? Finally, and most significantly, given the spacecraft's age and distance, is it even possible to fix it? To discuss all these problems, we must first understand why the probe transmits a weird binary digit pattern. The Voyager spacecraft communicates with us via the binary system, just the way computers on Earth do. It uses only two integers, zero and one, to represent many types of information. Each zero or one is known as a bit, and a collection of these bits may represent anything from numbers and characters to more complex data such as images or sounds. There are three primary computers on Voyager 1, 
and the problem is caused by two of them. The first computer, known as the Flight Data System, FDS, is in charge of gathering two types of data from the spacecraft. It gathers data from scientific instruments used to investigate the universe, as well as data on the spacecraft's health, which indicates whether or not all parts are functioning correctly. After gathering this data in binary format, the FDS analyses and consolidates it into a single data package. This package then gets delivered to the second computer, the Computer Command System, which houses the Telemetry Modulation Unit, or TMU. The TMU's task is to send this package back to Earth. To send the package, the binary data is first modulated onto a carrier signal and transmitted to Earth. Once this is completed, the TMU sends the waves containing the data received on Earth via the Deep Space Network. The Deep Space Network, DSN, is a network of enormous radio antennas strategically positioned around the Earth, including in California, Spain, and Australia, to enable continuous contact with various spacecraft as the world spins. In data centers, binary data is processed further once it is received. Finally, the binary data is transformed into human rateable representations, such as numerical values, graphs, or photographs, which are then used for analysis and study. Voyager 1 has shared information in this fashion for about four decades. But recently, the spacecraft's communication system encountered an inexplicable glitch. Instead of transmitting the typical combination of scientific information and spacecraft health data, the TMU has been observed to emit a weird and repeated series of ones and zeros that do not make any sense. That is a long procedure since a signal from Earth presently takes 20 hours and 33 minutes to reach Voyager 1. Receiving the spacecraft's response has the same time frame. In an early study on the matter, NASA believes that the fundamental issue is with the FDS. For unknown reasons, the FDS is not processing the data correctly. Since a piece of inaccurate information is reaching the TMU via FDS, the TMU transmits illogical binary signals back to Earth. When such an issue occurs, the first step is to reset the flight data system by turning it off and then back on. This strategy frequently solves most technical issues on Earth and in space. For example, when Voyager 2's data revealed a similar issue caused by a flip in one of the bits in 2010, the crew used a resetting instruction for the FDS's memory to repair the issue successfully. This on-off mechanism even resolved a fault experienced by the Hubble Space Telescope a few years ago. Following the same technique, the FDS was reset, but it made no difference. The problem continued when the system restarted. This has encouraged engineers and scientists to develop stronger solutions. Yet, the task is more complicated than it seems. First and foremost, the spacecraft was created over half a century ago by people who have now retired. As a result, the current team must go deeply into the old records to determine how the probe and its computers function. In addition, the technology is quite outdated, despite multiple software updates in recent decades. As a comparison, today's cell phone can process over 100 billion commands per second. However, the Voyager's processors can only handle 8,000 per second. The technological difference between Voyager and current probes is roughly equivalent to that between an MP3 player and a tape recorder, or a smartphone and a dial telephone. Secondly, at the current distance of Voyager 1, light takes over 22.5 hours to go one way to Earth. So, every time the team comes up with a potential answer and tests it, there is a 45-hour round trip wait for the signal to arrive and a response to return. On the good side, this isn't the first time Voyager 1 has returned random data. In 2022, the probe returned part of its data via a damaged computer on board, distorting the outgoing communications. However, NASA engineers identified and resolved the issue. Remember that the Voyager mission wasn't meant to stay that long in space. This remarkable mission, which was initially intended to study the outer planets, has dramatically surpassed expectations and gives priceless insights into the cosmos beyond our solar system. The probe is fueled by a radioisotope, thermoelectric generator, 
that gradually loses power over time. As a result, the crew behind Voyager 1 must make difficult decisions regarding which sections of the probe should remain operational. The final photograph obtained by Voyager 1's cameras was part of the Family Portrait series of solar system photos, captured on February 14, 1990. The series contained the iconic pale blue dot photograph of Earth. The stunning photograph depicts Earth from a distance of 3.7 billion miles, 6 billion kilometers, looking like a small point of light in the vastness of space. To save electricity, the cameras and other non-essential devices were shut off after taking these photographs. The primary goal of NASA engineers is to maintain the sensors that carry data back to Earth operational for as long as possible. As of January 2024, only 4 out of 10 Voyager 1 equipment were functioning. The data delivered by Voyager 1 is vital because the probe is currently in a part of space where the sun's effect is weak, and the data informs us about events like cosmic rays and magnetic fields that we have never been able to study directly before. However, as Voyager 1 moves further away from Earth, remaining in touch becomes increasingly difficult. Signals take longer to travel and are significantly weaker by the time they reach us. Despite these hurdles, Voyager 1 continues on its mission. It is not intended for any specific star or planet, although it will pass very close to a star known as Gliese 445 in roughly 40,000 years. By human standards, this is a long period but it is a blink of an eye on a cosmic scale. One of the most unique aspects of Voyager 1 is the golden record it carries. This record is similar to a time capsule, containing sounds and images from Earth and designed to teach other life forms what life is like on our planet, if they ever discover it. This album also includes playing instructions, as well as a map of its origins. The goal was to share a fragment of our planet with whoever found it, even if it was millions of years from now. It's like a bottle thrown into the cosmic ocean, sending a message about who we are from a small blue planet far away. What more information Voyager 1 and 2 will transmit in the upcoming months is yet unknown. It is possible that both probes will keep traveling across space for countless years. NASA anticipates that radio communication with the probes will end either this year or early next year. This will signal the end of a period that has given mankind unprecedented insights into space over more than 45 years. The two Voyager spacecraft were the first to conduct an extensive examination and capture images of the outer planets, as well as offer insights into the Kuiper Belt and other distant parts of the solar system. Also, the Voyager space mission took astronomers into unexplored areas. The excitement on Earth was noticeable, and every signal, every movement of the probe's measuring devices was met with huge enthusiasm. One of the questions it was hoped the probes would answer was, where exactly does the solar system end? The subject of where interstellar space begins and our solar system truly ends has long baffled scientists. Flares appear to be dominant toward the end of the solar sphere. Think of billowing winds and fields that occasionally overlap and become weaker or stronger in certain areas. Researchers were able to detect a powerful solar flare weeks later, near the solar system's boundary. That's how long it took the plasma streams to reach 10 to 15 billion kilometers to the solar system's edge. Plasma streams travel across space at a speed of around 1,000 kilometers per second, meaning they travel far slower than light. A solar plasma stream typically takes one to two days to reach Earth. Voyager supplied data from interesting particle flows and solar winds, as well as the first detection of radio waves from flares distant from the sun. At the extreme edge of the heliosphere, the sun's plasma clouds, which are still relatively warm and less dense, collide with cooler and denser interstellar plasma. The drag forms and compresses the heliosphere at its outer edge. Voyager's observations revealed substantially denser flows shortly before the probe reached interstellar space for real. Our solar system is neither motionless in space nor securely suspended in plasma. Rather, the Sun and its planets travel across the interstellar medium at a rate of around 84,000 kilometers per hour. These figures were validated for the first time using Voyager's readings near the heliosphere's edge. 
So, in a way, the solar system was traveling alongside the little probe. It was, therefore, surprising to witness how the probe's flying pattern changed when it got closer to interstellar space. Amidst our limited understanding of the wide gap between stars and stellar systems, the heliopause and the closest star are separated by 40 trillion kilometers of empty space. Then we would get to our next star neighbor, Alpha Centauri. From there, it's billions of kilometers to the next star, and so on. Today, we know that interstellar space is far from empty. It includes gases, particles, light beams flowing through space, and the enigmatic dark matter. The interstellar medium might be referred to as the universe's breeding ground, or just space, as late as the early 20th century, scholars believed that the space in which our universe exists was empty, with the stars and planets suspended inside it. Only through the work of Albert Einstein and several of his contemporaries do we know that the entire cosmos is exceptionally mobile, with all objects constantly moving and changing. Also, interstellar space and its underlying structures are believed to contain previously undiscovered types of matter, as well as structures and filaments that move the known forms of the cosmos. As the Voyager probes go farther into outer space, they can help us learn more about issues we don't yet understand, such as what exists in space and how it functions. This is really crucial for understanding the cosmos. Now we know the Voyager probes are in space, but where are they headed? To answer that, we must understand their composition. Both Voyager probes are outfitted with plutonium batteries, which have incredibly long lifespans but are not unlimited. To preserve crucial energy, many of the probe's measurement equipment and cameras were turned off at or after the heliopause had passed. Even over such a long distance, communication with the probes is possible using standard radio waves. Meanwhile, a signal takes around 23 hours to reach Earth. As previously stated, Radio contact with Voyager 1 will end sometime this year. The probe and its sister spacecraft, which has been in interstellar space for some years, will continue to fly. To date, the probe has gone to approximately 129 astronomical units, but its remaining travel miles are unknown. According to current estimations, the probe can still travel across space for hundreds or millennia. To answer the question about destination, in 38,000 years, Voyager 1 will approach the star Gliese 445 in the Little Bear constellation. Considering the distance is about 1.7 light years, the probe will most likely not be captured by the star system and will continue to fly until it is drawn in by a gravitational net. It is possible that Voyager will enter a distant star system in this manner at some point and then proceed closer to the star along gravitational attraction lines. The probe will either burn up in a star be hit by an asteroid, or be discovered by an extraterrestrial culture. In this last scenario, both Voyager probes have communications from our world on board. Both Voyager 1 and 2 had a golden record. The discs contain music, images of ordinary life sceneries, sounds, and facts about Earth and human beings. There's also an instruction manual with simple pictograms to help extraterrestrials play the recordings correctly. Experts believe the golden disks will last for many billion years, so the messages will likely be received at some point. We don't know if humans will still exist at that time, or if a receiving culture will be able to respond to our message. After almost 45 years, the Voyager missions are gradually coming to an end. The probes continue on their journey, but we will no longer be able to follow them. NASA scientists are thrilled with their incredible achievement, but they also feel a sense of loss. Many of the project's technicians, researchers, and other professionals have spent nearly half their lives following Voyager missions. But on the bright side, space provides so many fascinating mission locations that astrophysicists and NASA scientists will not be bored. Thus, Voyager 1's journey is more than just a scientific expedition. It's a narrative of human curiosity and desire. Given what the twins have accomplished thus far, there is still hope for the latest technical hiccup to be resolved. And if this problem gets fixed, experts believe the spacecraft will last until the mission's 50th anniversary. What new findings and experiences await us 
as Voyager 1 continues its remarkable voyage into the uncharted depths of interstellar space, and what cosmic mysteries will it unearth along the way? Thank you for watching another episode of Voyager. While you are still here, click on the video on your screen to see more mind-blowing videos like this one.